G'day, my name's Holden Shepherd. I'm a novelist, freelance writer and live storyteller. And today in this mini lecture, I'll be talking about the concept of genre in relation to literature. So what is genre? As humans, one of the first things we do to understand something is to define and categorize it. So in relation to literature, the type of book is called its genre. It comes from the French word genre, which just means type or sort. So the idea of genre is that it's a shared set of expectations between the reader and the writer. So if I walk into a bookshop and pick up a book, without having to flick through the pages or read the blurb or even read the title, if I'm told what genre that book is, I have a set of understandings and expectations in my head based on that shared sense between the reader and writer. So if it's a crime book, I am assuming there'll be a murder, there'll be some kind of investigation, perhaps a detective, but the thrust of the book will be that we have to resolve the mystery of the crime that was committed. With a romance, we know that two people will meet, fall in love, probably fall apart, and then at the end, we're hoping they'll get back together at the end and have a happily ever after. And every genre has its own set of expectations like this. So action thriller, sci-fi fantasy, even literary fiction, they all conform to these expectations. In a way, I think genre is like a promise to the reader from the writer saying, trust me, this is what you're going to get when you read this book. And this is really important for the writer because it means we have to deliver on what the reader is expecting. If we don't deliver on those genre expectations, we risk having very disappointed and dissatisfied readers and probably a very short career in publishing. One of the things I want to mention in relation to genre is category. So category is just the age range that your book is pitched at in the market. So there's junior fiction for kids under the age of 8, middle grade from 8 to 12, young adult from 12 to 18, which is what I write, and adult fiction for everyone who's over 18. The reason I mention this is that the expectations of your category can be very similar to genre expectations as well. So when someone asks me what genre my book is, Invisible Boys, I say it's a contemporary young adult novel because the expectations people have around this are that it will be uh, appropriate and relevant and interesting to people in that 12 to 18 bracket. So that's the uh, element of category, and these things can sit on top of each other as well. So you can have uh, a middle grade fantasy novel, so you've got category and, and genre together, you can have young adult and suspense. It can all go hand in hand. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the ways that my book meets the genre expectations, or the generic expectations, of young adult. Firstly, it's the themes and the subject matter. So my characters are all 16-year-old boys, Zeke, Charlie and Hammer. They're all different kinds of boys and they're going through a journey of coming of age. The narrative is all about them growing from boys into men and what happens during that process for teenagers. All the themes and issues explored in the book are relevant and real to what teenagers go through. It's what I went through when I was a teenager. So things like first love, first kiss, first sex, uh, relationships with family, with friends, falling out with friends, falling in with new ones, uh, alcohol, house parties, mental health, everything that kind of happens during those formative years is in this book. So thematically, it's exactly what a reader would expect when they pick up a contemporary young adult book. I also use some techniques and strategies though to kind of enhance or uh, live up to the reader's expectations of what I'm doing in this book. So one of those is the style and the point of view that I actually wrote the book in. So I wrote this book in first person, present tense. And these were actually really deliberate decisions because I have previously written books in third person past tense. And those decisions actually dictate what the reader's experience is like. So when I wrote this book in first person, I wanted to make sure, because I have three narrators, I wanted to make sure all their voices came across authentically and real and sounded like distinct three different boys. So it was important to have them say I and speak in the I voice through the whole thing. It also gives a sense of closeness to the characters. So you feel like you're actually in there with the narrator. And for me, the idea of first person narration gives a level of self-involvement that for me comes with the territory. So when you're a teenager, I know I was very, very, uh, you know, concerned with what's going on for me. And so the I voice really focuses on that kind of navel gazing approach uh, to the coming of age story. The other element I used was the present tense. So when I read something in a past tense style, I feel as a reader that this has already happened. So I'm reading about this you know, account of something that's happened in the past. If it's happened in the past, I know it's resolved. 
so I know it's already done and taken care of, so I can sit back and enjoy the book. But when I write something in present tense, my ambition with this was to actually make the reader feel like they're experiencing all these events, all these emotions, uh, all the problems and, and issues in real time alongside the narrator who's talking about them. So it feels urgent, it feels like it's all happening right here, right now. And so I wanted to bring that element, that energy and that pace into this book. It makes it a more intense experience. The other way I did this was through the letter bombs. So the book is written with interwoven strands from each of the three boys. But then there's also this series of anonymous letters. And these letters are coming from one of the boys, but we don't know which one. And the technique I used to kind of produce those letters is called stream of consciousness. So I had the person writing these letters write freely without punctuation, without any level of editing or expectation around what should be said. It's very free writing, it's very distracted writing, and it's confused. But I wanted it to represent the sense of confusion and angst that can come from being in a mental health crisis when you're a teenager. So actually employing that technique of writing was designed to put the reader in the, that person's shoes and really evoke that sense of what it's like to be a confused teenager. The other element I used was the dialogue. And this was really important to me because I'm not a teenager anymore but I was writing words out of teenagers' mouths. So I really wanted to make sure it sounded realistic. I thought about speaking to my nieces and nephews who are teenagers and saying, you know, what's the current slang? Fill me in. Uh, but I realised very quickly that would be inauthentic. And also slang gets dated really quickly. And the fact is, after you write a novel, it can take a year to two years for that novel to actually hit shelves. So by the time that, that slang, um, that book has come out, that slang is probably already dated anyway. So I tried to think more holistically. What have teenagers always been like across every generation? And in every generation of teenagers, we see uh, a lot of irreverence, you know, to authority, to parents, to teachers, but also to each other. Um, we see a lot of larrikinism, especially um, in these teenage boys that I'm dealing with. So I wanted to evoke that. So there's still slang and there's still irreverent kind of talk, but it doesn't try to live up to a certain era. So for me, that felt more authentic. Uh, something else I did was that these characters are set uh, in a country town. It's set in Geraldton in the Midwest of Western Australia. So there had to be some level of colloquialism, some ockerisms. I didn't want it to be full on, uh, you know, super Aussie blokes and sheilas kind of thing. But it had to have some element of, of the place really being dictated by the way people speak. Uh, so I hope it came across as uh, less Crocodile than the more Kath and Kim. Uh, but the idea was that it would show, you know, a little bit of boganism, a little bit of Aussie um, culture as it is. Um, as opposed to trying to make it neutral or, or palatable for an international audience. The other thing I included here was the swearing, and this was really important to me because if there's any demographic that swears a lot, it's teenagers. Um, and even though that's not necessarily always liked by parents or teachers, it is the reality of how teenagers speak. So it's important for my characters to have those in there. Um, however, there are certain expectations around the young adult genre that really need to be met. So... This is because there are gatekeepers in the uh, in the world of publishing and in book selling. So uh, booksellers, teachers, um, principals even, parents, um, all and librarians especially, um, will all decide whether or not a book you know goes into a library or a school or into a bookshop in the first place. So they'll decide what teenagers can have access to sometimes. So it's really important that I have to work within the expectations of this genre. I can't push too far, I can't be too graphic, or it won't actually reach the teenagers I want this book to reach. So my initial manuscript had about uh, 30 C-bombs and over 100 uh, F-words. And my publisher talked to me about, look, we need to keep this because it's authentic, this is how the teenagers speak, but you need to pare it back enough that it's not gratuitous, that it's not off-putting, that it's just enough that you know that this is how they speak, but we don't hear it every single word. So that was an expectation I had to meet in order for this book to, to fit in properly with the YA genre. My advice for any young writers who are wanting to write in a particular genre is that to write in a genre, you have to know the genre. And to know a genre, you must read the genre. So if you're wanting to write a high fantasy novel, you need to be reading some high fantasy novels. There's two reasons for this. Firstly, you need to understand what those genre expectations are. So you need to be able to deliver on them. So if you read a lot of fantasy books, you'll find out what works, which books make you really happy when they get it right, and which books have disappointed you. And you'll work out why they disappoint you, and usually it's because they didn't meet 
your expectations of what should have happened in that genre. So once you know that, you can write it really well. The second part of understanding your genre is that once, once you know what is already out there, you can find the gaps in the market. So a lot of the time in publishing, they'll talk about there being no original stories left to tell. And to some extent that's true. Most stories have been told in some form. But what publishers and agents are looking for mostly is fresh angles, new voices, people telling stories in ways that haven't been told previously. So it's not necessarily the story itself, but the way it's told. So the more you understand and read your genre, the more you know what the gaps are and where your story might be able to fit and how it would interest a publisher or an agent. So I would encourage you to read widely, to learn how to do your genre really well, and to also find the way that your unique voice could fit into the world of literature.